Welcome to this series of videos about the sound effects used by professional drummers 100 years ago. In this video, we're covering the sound effects that would be used to imitate horses and blacksmiths. Today's special guest is William F. Ludwig III, grandson of the founder of the Ludwig and Ludwig Company. Welcome, Bill. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So there was a whole range of, of sound effects just dedicated to the sound of the horse. My grandfather made horses hoof sounds. The anvil was used to recreate the sound of a blacksmith. So you could have basically the drummer would make the sound of the horse's hoofs as they went by, accompanied by the sound of a blacksmith. And when the horse was really out on the full run with the sheriff in pursuit of the bad guys, he even had a whip sound that he could recreate that he would be slapping the horse or whipping the horse. I noticed that in the horse's hooves, there is a, a, a curve to the inside. Yes, that's to create the uh, resonating sound of the horse's hoofs. And you can also, by cupping it more with your entire hand, change that sound a little bit, deaden it a little bit, if you will, or holding it by the edges gives you yet a different uh, type of sound. So it is, it is uh, unique to have the curved top of that uh, cup. Now let me ask you a question. How would the percussionist using the horse's hooves make a different sound whether the horse is on cobblestone versus um, maybe a, a dirt road? Well that's a great question because they would have a table in the back that they would either have a, a possibly a towel over or some cloth to be the dirt road type sound and then go off that to the hard wooden table or sometimes even have a special slab of either marble or metal that they would get the horse's hoof sound on that to recreate those various different styles of roads. Great. Can we talk you into giving us a demonstration? I'd love to. And the whip sound effect is also known as a slapstick. Correct. Do you know what kind of wood that's made of? That's, that's a maple, maple wood, and uh, it's cut out of one piece, and the top piece is then hinged with a spring on the top of the bottom piece to create the slapping sound. Now, I notice your slapstick has some black markings on the side. Tell yes. us about that. Well, that was an interesting scenario when I was doing a clinic one time and had the slapstick too close to the sure shot gun machine. And when I did the firing of the gun machine, the flames came out and burned the wood. So don't use the sure shot machine with a tablecloth because I burned a tablecloth. Don't put anything near it because you'll burn that too. So I learned that the hard way. And what type of striker would you use to play the anvil with? From the catalog, it was a metal rod with a metal ball on the end of it, which I don't have one in my collection, so I use the hammer. Oh, my, my, that's simple. My Ludwig drum issued hammer from the hardware store <laughs> that also doubles as a hammer. But uh, I use that to fire the sure shot shots, anvil, and also ring the bell on the train machine. Perfect. So it's a multi-purpose hammer. Well, thanks again to my special guest, Bill Ludwig. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks for watching, and we will see you on the flip side.
This activity is made possible by the voters of Minnesota through a grant from the East Central Regional Arts Council thanks to a legislative appropriation from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund.